Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of this presentation is first to briefly explain the clinical uses and modes of action of the oral shield appliance, and secondly, to demonstrate to you the technique for laboratory fabrication of an oral shield. This is an oral shield right here. It is a piece of plexiglass that is formed and shaped to fill the vestibule of a patient's mouth. As it fits in the mouth, the oral shield extends to the distal of the first permanent molar on one side around to the distal of the first permanent molar on the other side. It extends to the greatest depth of the labial vestibule, superiorly, inferiorly, that the stretch of the cheek and lip tissues will comfortably allow. This appliance has as its primary clinical use the control of harmful oral habits. Thus, the muscles in the perioral region that are abnormally functioning may be retrained. This appliance can be used as an aid in treating thumb and finger sucking habits, lip biting habits, mouth breathing or open lip posture, and also to some extent it can be used in the treatment of tongue thrust problems. For the thumb or finger sucking habit, the oral shield may serve as a reminder appliance because it provides a physical barrier to the placement of the thumb or finger into the mouth. For the three other oral habit problems mentioned, lower lip biting, mouth breathing, and tongue thrust, the oral shield can be used to help stimulate the development of a more favorable lip and cheek muscle tone. To explain, by filling the vestibule in a vertical dimension, the oral shield elicits a stretch reflex in the lip musculature, thus stimulating improvement in lip muscle tone. Normal lip muscle tone can affect the lingual repositioning of incisor teeth and also the retention of incisor teeth in a more lingual position. Essentially, the main objective of the oral shield is to stimulate the development of a more desirable balance of perioral muscle forces. That is, muscle forces from the lips, the cheek, and the tongue. The secondary purpose or use of the oral shield is to retrude maxillary incisor teeth that have been protruded by an oral habit. When the oral shield is in the mouth, the convex outside surface of the plexiglass contacts the lip and cheek tissues over its entire surface. The inside surface of the oral shield contacts only the maxillary incisor teeth. As the lip and cheek muscles contract, the muscle force is applied to the incisor teeth through the oral shield. The net effect is a lingual repositioning of the maxillary incisors. The greatest lingual tooth movement effect from the oral shield occurs in those habit cases with maxillary incisor spacing and anterior open bite incisor relationships. These are models of a thumb habit case treated with an oral shield. I'm holding the before treatment models with maxillary incisor spacing and incisor open bite. The oral shield was used for 18 months in this case, worn at night while sleeping. The after treatment models shown here exhibit a three millimeter overjet reduction closure of the anterior incisor spacing and the establishment of cingulum contact of upper and lower incisor teeth. 
The materials and equipment needed to fabricate an oral shield in the laboratory are laid out on this table. First, you must have two sets of models of the patient, trimmed to centric occlusion. One set serves as study models, and the other set will serve as our work model. Now, these models must have full extension into the labial vestibule to the greatest depth that the stretch of the cheek and lip musculature will allow. The other materials needed to fabricate the oral shield are a piece of one eighth of an inch thick plexiglass cut to a size of two and a half inches by five and a half inches approximately. This plexiglass can be obtained in large sheets at a hobby shop or in some areas at a hardware store. White model plaster is needed. A three by five inch piece of aluminum foil, some waterproof sandpaper, a scalpel and a lab knife, a large rubber band or two pieces of sticky wax, a Bunsen burner, a piece of chamois cloth, a rubber bowl full of water, a white china marking pencil, and lastly, instruments that are used for cutting and polishing acrylic. Arbor band, acrylic burrs, gemstones, wet pumice on a rag wheel, and Bendig polish. All these materials are listed in the handout instructions for the oral shield. There is some preparation of the work model that precedes the actual fabrication of the oral shield. The work models are secured together in centric occlusion with a rubber band. A stick of sticky wax could be used to secure the models together also. These models should be soaked in water at this time to drive off most of the air in the plaster. To construct the work model itself, model plaster is mixed and is poured into the tongue space of the models secured together. The tongue space is completely filled with model plaster. On the labial surface, the plaster is allowed to come through the teeth and all of the embrasures and depressions on the labial surface of the model are filled with plaster. The plaster is applied so that the final product presents a convex rounded shape. The labial surfaces of the maxillary teeth are allowed to show through the plaster after it is applied. The plaster is kept away from the depths of the vestibule as I'm cleaning it out here. This is set aside to dry then. When the plaster is dry, the excess plaster base is trimmed off the model on the model trimmer to a height just above the depth of the vestibule. A pencil outline is drawn on the work model. The line is drawn at the greatest depth of the labial vestibule in the region from cuspid to cuspid. Relief is allowed in the frenum areas. The outline extends to the distal of the first permanent molars. Next, the excess plaster beyond the pencil line is trimmed away to allow access for adaptation of the acrylic. The plaster is trimmed away right up to the pencil outline on the work model. 
Now, three to five millimeters of plaster is trimmed off the incisor region of the work model. This plaster is removed from the incisor region so that the oral shield in its final adaptation when it fits in the mouth will contact only the maxillary incisor teeth on its inside surface. The area marked in red indicates the size of the area to be trimmed of plaster. You should trim the plaster off one side first, check the depth of cut, and then the plaster on the other side is trimmed off. The entire surface of the work model should be smoothed with sandpaper at this time. Also, it may be necessary to add plaster at this point to be sure that the surface is smooth and convex. The work model is now fully prepared. The first step in the fabrication of the oral shield is to take a piece of aluminum foil and push it onto the work model adapting it with your fingers. With a scalpel blade, the foil is trimmed right along the pencil outline. This type of trimming is done around the entire extent of the pencil outline. This foil has been trimmed as it should be. The foil is flattened out and placed on a piece of plexiglass. The plexiglass still has its paper covering the outline of the foil is drawn onto the paper on the outside surface of the plexiglass. As shown here. The plexiglass beyond the pencil line is trimmed away using an arbor band on a dental lathe and also acrylic burrs. Here the plexiglass has been trimmed to the pencil line. The paper covering on the plexiglass is removed and it is now ready to be adapted onto the work model. To adapt the plexiglass to the work model, you hold the plexiglass in the chamois cloth and heat it over the Bunsen burner flame slowly. You want to be sure that the plexiglass does not get so hot that it catches on fire and also that it doesn't get so hot that bubbles form. You keep the plexiglass moving in the flame until it begins to become flexible. The entire surface of the plexiglass is heated in this initial stage. The heated plexiglass is carefully placed on the work model and pushed down with the chamois cloth. The chamois cloth serves as a cushion of insulation for your fingers. You Push the plexiglass onto the work model until it begins to cool slightly. This usually takes 15 to 20 seconds. The plexiglass is quickly pushed, put into a bowl of cold water to, to cool it and 
this holds the shape of the plexiglass. You should dry the plexiglass off and then reheat one small section of the plexiglass to carefully adapt it to the work model. Again, holding it with the chamois cloth, one small area. In this case, we'll do the upper left vestibular extension of the plexiglass. Is heated in the flame again, keeping it moving until it becomes flexible. You place the plexiglass back onto the work model in exactly the same position that you had it initially and push down on that area that you have been heating so that it adapts right tightly to the work model. Again, the plexiglass is cooled in water to hold its shape. You continue to reheat and readapt the plexiglass onto the work model until it has the, the shape that you desire it to have. Here is an oral shield that has been completely adapted to the work model. The edges of the plexiglass are rounded with gemstones and acrylic burrs. As the first step in the finishing procedure, the whole appliance then is polished with wet pumice and then dry Bendix on a dental lathe as the final polishing procedure. The criteria for a good oral shield are these. First, the oral shield must have superior inferior peripheral extension to the greatest depth of the vestibule from cuspid to cuspid. The original alginate impression, of course, must have full extension if the final product oral shield is to be properly extended. Secondly, the oral shield plexiglass tapers as it extends from the cuspid region posteriorly to the distal of the first permanent molar. Thirdly, the oral shield must be symmetrical from side to side. Fourth, the plexiglass is closely adapted to the work model in the anterior region from cuspid to cuspid. This means that the plexiglass should be convex in a superior inferior dimension in the anterior region. Lastly, the plexiglass is two to three millimeters away from the work model in the posterior region. If the oral shield is fabricated to these specifications, it can certainly be an effective clinical aid in the treatment of oral habit problems. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.